the Tesla Model 3. Everything you want to know about the car. JLR's first electric production model, the I-PACE driven. And the new generation of Yamaha's R15. We have that review. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of CNB. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patnikar and boy do we have a bit of a surprise for you today. So you've already had a glimpse of it so I'm not going to try and be secretive. Yes, we have a first look at the Tesla Model 3 but that's coming up a little bit later on the program but I am going to still talk about the other electric car on the show that is the I-PACE from Jaguar. Now you saw the debut of the car that happened globally at the Geneva Motor Show just a few days ago right here on CNB. Now we have more details on it. Driving an electric car today is still somewhat of a novelty but that is the first notion that gets partly dispelled when you start driving the Jaguar I-PACE. It feels like a proper car. So I showed you the first glimpse that even I had of the I-PACE from the show floor at Geneva just a few days ago and now it's time to actually try and jump in and get a quick first impression by actually driving the car as well. So it's a short little loop that I'm getting a chance to do but you know what, it was an opportunity, I was certainly not going to pass up. So Jaguar had set up a small circuit with dynamic cones to be able to get a good feel of what this car can do. The Jaguar I-Pace under show lights and outdoors under the sun is a different car. It looked better with very obvious design cues that give it its own unique character and yet enough there to know that it's a Jag. A cab forward design since there's no engine up front with its short hood is accentuated by the large wheel arches and rising rear. It is more crossover than SUV in that sense, but still looks tough. The 432 lithium-ion battery cells that make a 90 kilowatt hour pack are housed in the car's floor, giving it a unique design advantage. The car's interior will surprise many with its ample space and very comfortable layout. Something you don't expect when you see the car from the outside. There is that immediate advantage of the electric powertrain which gives you that generous wheelbase. Now remember at the time when we first saw the I-PACE concept, there was a lot of talk about how because it's electric it gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of interior design. Now think about it, the overall uh, typical things that happen when you design a typical car well, those constraints kind of go away, so you get a nice roomy cabin and getting inside and driving it today, I can tell you, you really get a good sense of space and as if the actual space wasn't enough, well, then you've also got this beautiful panoramic roof that, well, I guess today on a nice cloudy, murky day like this one, isn't very obvious, but imagine a nice blue sky up there. That would look pretty cool. The cabin is very car-like. There is a display that tells you how much charge and driving range the car has left on board. The instruments are virtual and there are two touch screens to control in-car comfort and infotainment functions where buttons would otherwise have been on the central console. Now that's somewhat of a borrow from the Range Rover Velar. The floor will feel a bit high but you get used to that driving position fairly quickly and you can adjust the seat to your liking. The boot is a surprising 656 litres and that is expandable to 1453 litres with the rear split seats folded down. The little 30 litre space up front under what you think is the bonnet can be used to store the charging cables. What I got was a short course as I said but the dynamic cones gave it a credibility most such experiences cannot. 
So you see the cones laid out on the tarmac each had LED lights mounted on the top. These lights would randomly change from red to green indicating where you need to head next. So it was not a predictable route but an ever changing one and it challenged not only your attention span but also the car's maneuverability and control. And this was ideal then to experience two things straight away. The car's nimble feel and very direct, precise steering. It also showcased the advantages electrics have with instant torque that you have from the get-go. The I-Pace also uses the one pedal idea with the car braking to a halt simply by lifting off the gas pedal. So there is a brake pedal of course. And that's pretty effective by the way. And it's amazing how quickly you get used to that and forget about using the brake pedal. The large wheels don't take away from the ride comfort or handling. The lack of engine noise makes the car's cabin almost too hushed. Road noise is barely perceptible too. And you only hear the whine of the electric motors when you accelerate hard. There are two motors, one at each axle, and they use synchronous permanent magnet technology. This, I'm told, allows for the I-Pace to be more efficient than current electrics. The driving range is an impressive 480 kilometers and a quick 40 minute rapid charge will give you 80% power. The I-Pace is quick with 392 bhp and a massive 696 nm of torque to play with. Will it come to India? Theoretically, I suppose the answer is yes, but perhaps not for some time to come. As a first all-electric offering from JLR, it is certainly a great effort since it's not just technologically impressive, but also fun to drive. So the Jaguar I-Pace, really exciting stuff. And from a car that debuted at the Geneva Motor Show, and then I drove it later, to a bike that debuted at our Auto Expo, and Pritham had the chance to ride it a few days ago. That's the R15 from Yamaha. It definitely is a looker and with updated styling it also gets a bigger more powerful engine with new technology new chassis and suspension updated brakes and with more technology than ever Yamaha has definitely worked on making its popular entry-level superbike more attractive but how is it really We spend a few short laps around a racetrack to see what the new R15 version 3 is like. Yamaha's entry-level sport bike, the YZF R15, was first launched in 2008. In 2012, Yamaha introduced the version 2 of the R15 and now in 2018, Yamaha has introduced the version 3 of the YZF R15. The R15 went on to change the motorcycling scenario in India with an entry-level full-fed sport bike. And today, we are at the Madras Motor Racetrack near Chennai to see what a new R15 version 3 has to offer. System. The Yamaha R15 version 3 now looks sharper than before, with styling inspired by the bigger Yamaha R1. On the face, it gets the split dual LED headlights on the sharp new fairing. A R1 style cockpit with a multi-function all digital instrument panel, LED tail light and new body panels. It certainly looks good and leaner and more proportionate than ever. But there are a few niggles, like the glaring large belt on the Delta Box frame. Build quality as well as fit and finish certainly could have been better. There are a lot of new things in the Yamaha YZF R15 version 3. Updated styling, a new engine, new suspension, the brakes have been upgraded, new swing arm, new chassis. In fact, it's almost an all new bike. The engine now displaces 155cc and also gets variable valve actuation, which offers better torque spread over a wider rev range, making the bike feel eager and quicker. 
but also requiring fewer gear changes. It also gets a slipper clutch, so gear changes are slick and the feel on the lever is light. Around the racetrack, the new R15 offers superb road manners and the more you ride, the more confident you get of the bike's handling and stability. Lap after lap, it feels friendlier and familiar and urges you to push harder, tighter into the corners. We've had a few laps around the MMRT on a new YZF R15 version 3. Not as many as we'd have liked to. But yes, uh, what's mentionable is the engine. It's a very nice refined engine. It's the most powerful engine in its class. And what's also likable is the variable valve actuation. Uh, what it does is you can pull cleanly from low revs at higher gears. So in the city, it's definitely going to be very nice. And also for someone who's upgrading to the first sport bike, the handling is really something which I like about this bike. The new Yamaha R15 is priced at 1,25,000 rupees and for the updates it gets, it still is a great proposition as an entry level sport bike. And in that segment, there's no other bike as engaging and entertaining to ride and it can go a long way in making you a more confident and better rider before you decide to upgrade to a bigger and more performance oriented bike. That in itself is reason enough to consider the new Yamaha R15. Now for those of you who are familiar with the name freewheeling, well it certainly conjures up certain images for you and it's always something exclusive we bring you on that series and so we're getting into freewheeling mode with a mini series you'll see over the next few weeks right here on the show. We have travelled across stateside, in fact Cyrus has to be more specific, to bring you just what's happening now when it comes to future mobility. Now instantly, the first thought that comes to your mind, electric cars. But it's more than just that. We'll start off though with the crown jewel, it's Tesla. Now Tesla has in many ways been responsible for bringing about this whole change. And the Model 3 is the car that excited so many of you when bookings opened worldwide including India. So what is the Model 3 all about? This is our first look at the car. If you look at all the cars launched in the last few years, SUVs, supercars, hypercars, etc. There is just one that we can think of that has made an impact like nothing we have ever seen. And no, it isn't the latest Porsche, Ferrari or Lambo. In fact, it doesn't even have a proper engine. Yes, it is electric. And if you haven't guessed it by now, we are talking about the Tesla Model 3. While Tesla founder Elon Musk has said that the electric car maker will make it to India sometime next year in 2019, we flew to California to spend some time with this new sedan to see if all the hype was real or it was just a buzz about nothing. Let me quickly go over the Model 3's exterior before I get to the really interesting bits because the exterior has been a bit of debate. Uh, some people love it, some people are a little confused, a little apprehensive about it. But of course, that's the big question mark. There is no front grille in its traditional sense. But it does have this lovely line across the bonnet and it does have a very distinctively Tesla look. Now, it isn't a large, large car in the traditional sense. It is about the same size as your uh, BMW 3 Series, maybe a Mercedes C-Class, maybe slightly even smaller, but it does look quite sexy, especially in this really nice deep red color. In profile 2, the Tesla Model 3 looks swoopy and almost coupe-like, with one swooping traceable line that can be drawn from the front all the way to the rear. Around the back, though, it gets even more distinctly Tesla. A subtle built-in, almost ducktail-like rear spoiler and a set of distinct tail lamps make it unmistakably a Tesla. But unlike the Model S or Model X, this one gets no Model 3 badges anywhere, just a Tesla logo at the rear. But now, let's take you on the inside and show you the really interesting bits. Before that though, follow me because I need to show you something. 
Now traditionally you would open your car with a key or a key fob. You press it and the door opens. In the other Teslas you walk up to the car and the car opens for you. Of course the Model 3 doesn't have that automatic door option that the Model X does. What it does have is an app. So while you normally would have your phone in your pocket, you walk up to the car, the car recognizes you and unlocks the car. In this case, it also if you don't have the phone on you, it also has a little car. Now this is basically just like a credit card, it's exactly as slim as a credit card. You can keep it in your pocket, swipe it around, the door is unlocked. And that leads you to the most interesting part, in my opinion, of the Model 3, the interior. <laughs> Now if you think your brand new Volvo is minimalistic, well it is, but this ladies and gentlemen, this is the future. There is no denying it, cars when they move to autonomy, when they move to cleaner interiors, this is how cool it's going to be. One massive central screen, nothing in the front and just absolute brilliant, brilliant minimalism. Now there is uh, a very unique styling feature that I want to talk, talk about first before I get to the very obvious screen. And that is the AC vent. Now, on normal cars, you have a vent on the left, you have a vent on the right for you, and you have a couple of vents on the right side for your passenger. In this case, however, it's one massive vent uh, running all the way across, right here, on the top, and that's completely one vent for the air conditioning system. Now, even though it's one vent, you can still adjust it. There are a whole bunch of adjustment options. You can actually move the fan switch speed up, and it does blow in air. And you can move it down again and it does control really nicely again the screen is the center of attraction for the car for me and of course it is the center of everything for the car itself now, everything you need is in this screen so if you for example want to have your lights on you can have your lights on through there you can actually have your fog lights or headlights also control through here You can even control the driving dynamics in your car through that central screen. So you can choose between three different types of steering field modes, for example comfort, standard and sport. And yes, in a Tesla, it does genuinely transform the way the car drives. You can even control regenerative braking and even configure the creep function to deal with all that crazy California traffic. Things do start getting really cool though when you can do things like adjust your mirrors and even your steering wheel by just these two buttons and what you have on the on the screen. So for example, if you press the steering wheel option here, you can actually move this down. The steering wheel does move in and out. And if you do it up and down, it actually does that. <laughs> Of course Tesla has done some things rather differently too, like for example, you have a button to open the door instead of a regular handle. So what happens if your battery dies? Well, the front doors do also get a secondary handle on the bottom that opens the door mechanically. And the quotes keep continuing. Now, regulation in most countries states that your hazard light has to be an actual switch. In this case, if you have a minimalist interior like this, it's only obvious that you don't want to make it an actual switch. But since Tesla had to, they've put it on the roof. Now, your lights of course still are, uh, aren't touch pads like some other cars are. They're actual buttons to turn them on. But so is your hazard light that's right here. And this just shows that a lot of genuine thought has gone into designing this car. A trait that we see less of even in some luxury car makers sometimes. If there was a complaint that we had about the Model 3's interiors though, it would be the fact that it just isn't as well made as the asking price demands it to be. This particular car for example is about $50,000 or about 32 odd lakh rupees in the United States and there are other cars in the price range that are much better built. As of today, over 5 lakh people including hundreds from India have booked the Model 3 with a deposit of just over $1,000 or about 63,000 rupees. The all-electric sedan is available in two variants. 
The standard version gets a 50 kilowatt per hour battery but offers 350 kilometers of range, a 0 to 100 time of 5.6 seconds and a top speed of 210. The more expensive extended range version like the one we have here gets a 75 kilowatt per hour battery, 500 kilometers of range, a 0 to 100 time of 5.1 seconds and a top speed of 225. Both cars offer a 30 minute DC quick charge with a range of 210 km on the standard model and 270 on the extended range version. While we do expect to see the car hit Indian shows sometime in 2019, you won't have to wait that long to see us review one. We will be driving the Tesla Model 3 very very soon so stay tuned for that. But before we let you go today, here is possibly the most epic thing a car can do today without actually moving. The Tesla Model X and its super super cool dance sequence. So our first look at the Model 3 and a little bonus for you at the end, the Dancing Model X. Next week on this series, we bring you up close to Byton, that's the other name that's starting to make the rounds now and is certainly looking serious when it comes to electric cars as well. So tune in for that. And in the meanwhile, promise me you'll wear your seatbelts, your helmets. Join us on the show next week.